When you left us last time, we had just hit the road from Grand Junction, Colorado, and were headed north to Dinosaur National Monument. It was still early October, and the fall color along the drive was definitely popping. We would make it there in just a couple hours, but we would still make a few stops along the way. So we just rolled up on this really cool little interpretive site called Cow Canyon. And I think there's some rock art behind me there. Rock art's kind of my jam. I have no idea what cultural group this is from. And it looks like we have petroglyphs. Oh yeah. All right, so Zach just told me that uh, this rock art is Fremont and Ute. This little, this little guy right here, I guess it's a, a rifle. What'd you call it, flint rock? Flintlock. The small town of Dinosaur lies only two miles from the Utah border. The local economy is very clearly supported by its proximity to the monument, whose headquarters are just east on Highway 40. this really awesome campsite up on this knoll. Pretty close to D Dinosaur National Monument. Super quiet. It's nice, we've been in Airbnbs for the last week or so, and uh, that's been wonderful, but can't beat that. There's a moon rising. I think it'll be full in the next couple days, which will be nice, but yeah. Beautiful, beautiful night. And I think we're just gonna tuck in, enjoy the quiet and hang out. All right, y'all, nighty night. We decided to hang out another day at this spot for the amazing views and to get a little editing done. We'd enjoy another fantastic sunset and a full moon on this evening. Feeling rested, it was time to check out the park. The entrance to Dinosaur passes through private and BLM land, so it was not surprising to see these ranchers moving their cattle from this high plateau.
We just rolled up on this overlook here in Dinosaur National Monument, and it is amazing. It just always blows my mind how there's these places like this that you don't hear about. This is one of the more stunning canyons I've ever seen. Yeah, it is spectacular. It's many thousands of feet below. And I think the Yampa River is flowing through this part yeah. of the park here. I know that the Green River and the Yampa, there's a large confluence here. Good yeah, stuff. Yeah, we're going we're to definitely try to get down. Um, there's a Yampa Bench Trail that, that uh, cruises along. Along the um, top of the river. The, I, the bench above all of this crazy canyon rock. And it's... Four by four high clearance but we couldn't really get a good explanation yeah. as to whether it was like rock crawling or just you know um a bumpy road this is stunning really good absolutely stuff. amazing yeah. dinosaur national monument huge surprise yeah try not to bust my booty coming down this little trail here. Doesn't seem steep on the camera. It definitely is a little steep. Oh yeah. That is good. We poked around at some of the park's overlooks, but the real attractions lie further below within the canyons. The road to Echo Park travels through many distinct rock layers, including several different sandstone types, making the drive a colorful one. There are no less than 23 separate rock layers exposed within the monument. The clouds really make it today. Wow. I think you would call this a truck wagon. I don't know. Oh my goodness. Yes. The overlanding rig of a bygone era. I mean, looks like they were doing it pretty good. Wow. Oh wow, look, there are old plows in here. The Chews owned this beautiful piece of property and I think they got here in the 20s and they had something like 2,000 acres. Actually, it's some really amazing hardwood floor. Oh, no way. My grandparents had this weird checkery faux brick looking laminate in like the 70s. I think you could probably get some hantavirus in here. Bird's nest.
I'm tempted to open the fridge, but I won't. So this is the view out the uh, master bedroom. The choose got to enjoy that view every day. Did you find the outhouse? I did. Okay, because I was wondering, there's sort of like this makeshift bathroom, bathroom inside, but. Oh yeah, I killed it. just some places that you visit and you're kind of taken aback by how magnificent and wild and beautiful they are. This happens to be one of them. Further down the trail, more sites were waiting to be discovered. This is called Whispering Cave, and it's uh, cool. Oh my gosh, I would say that the temperature dropped at least 10 degrees. What? This place is really cool and kind of spooky. Wow. What do you think about today? Well, that's pretty fantastic. This place is so underrated. Yeah, we didn't actually see any dinosaur bones, but... We didn't even see any dinosaurs. Yeah. And we don't normally camp at, um, like, designated camp spots, but this one was so good, and the river is so close that we decided to, uh, to pull in here. Yeah. But what's our issue? So last night we... Um, Went to make dinner. Well, before that, we started smelling propane. Our regulator on our on our stove developed a leak and pulled out the tools and stuff and tried to figure it out. But um, I think it's not a replaceable part or fixable part or we're down a stove and that's a problem because we use it to shower and we use it to cook and... Yeah, so we're gonna do, I think, salad and sand or sandwiches or hummus tonight, but we actually filled up our Zodi to... Uh, to take a shower. Take a shower, and then we realized, oh. We can't even use it. <laughs> but we're so. in a beautiful place. We can hear the river and the crickets, and we have views, and it's perfect. And I, I think we wanted six bucks, so we gave them 10 bucks. Yeah, yeah. We are going to the confluence of the Yampa River and the Green River. It's Echo Park where we're hiking right now. It used to be called Pat's Hole. And Pat's, Pat was an old, I don't know, recluse. Civil War vet. Yeah, Civil War vet. But he lived down here all by himself. Okay, 
we see some pronghorn, otherwise known as antelope, sort of just beyond those cottonwoods and to the right, closer to the base of the cliff. Oh yeah, they're just sleeping. I'm gonna stop talking and see if we can roll up on them. Okay, closer, but I can't see them on the camera. Maybe they're just deer. I keep seeing antlers. Oh, they're deer. These tame deer obviously knew they had nothing to fear from us, so we left them to their grazing and continued down the trail toward the confluence. It's a very gentle confluence. The Yampa's kind of mucky or muddy. And that green is definitely green. Although the meeting of these two rivers wasn't as dramatic as we had hoped, we simply enjoyed having this piece of such a beautiful place all to ourselves for the moment before heading back onto the road. The remainder of the Yampa Bench Trail is not much more than a winding forest road beyond Castle Park. It travels through established pinyon juniper country, but didn't provide much more in the way of views. It leads out of the monument back towards cattle country. have to travel into Utah to the western portion of the monument to see its namesake dinosaur excavation. The quarry is protected by an exhibit hall which makes viewing the 1500 or so dinosaur bones a comfortable experience. The fossils here are described as a log jam of bones, and it's thought that a flood event may have been the force that piled up these remains in such a way. Josie's cabin, and I can't remember what year she established this homestead or how long she lived here, but she was pretty rad because she was basically out here by herself. 
farming and ranching. This is primitive. What do you think? Crazy. Earth floors. Yeah. She definitely was living rustic. But pretty nice view out this window, honestly. I guess she had apples and all sorts of different fruit trees. shower at all we uh finally got what's this called a multi-fuel portable portable cook stove it's actually heating up our water right now got a little zodi going here um and we ended up ordering a part for our primus stove um but it's been what five days yeah yeah i mean we could probably go longer but it doesn't smell so good in our tent so Zach uh, went ahead and set up a lovely sort of outdoor shower. And then we have this spectacular view behind us. It's our little shower station. I mean, this is kind of one of those things that you, uh, you know, you don't really need, but it's nice to have. We have our little chairs set up. So stir fry tonight and a hot shower. I was judging how bad I smelled by the reactions of the people at Dinosaur National Monument. I'm I don't like think anybody away. was enjoying my presence. Tonight, we're gonna have some veggies and eat some good food, and I'm feeling very thankful and clean. You feeling clean? Mm -hmm. I'm fresh and clean. On our last day in the monument, we wanted to explore the Rainbow Park and Island Park areas to the Northwest. We were surprised to find even fewer visitors there. This is the site of the famous McKee Springs petroglyphs, containing some of the most iconic rock art panels to be found in the Southwest. All right, this is so cool. I've always wanted to see this rock art. And here it is, and it runs the length of this uh, sort of cliff wall here. We're just gonna to make our way up the road and up the cliff see what we see Join us next time as we push our way further into Utah before making our big turn south. Don't you ban yourself. There's banning taking place, don't ban yourself. It's like Maple Central. It is Maple Central.
Oh, I can't get the chain, honey. It's hot. It's hot right here. It's super hot. Ooh. Oh. The horse is like, let me out. The paint ratchet. Murder. Ah. Oh, hold on. Oh. Ah. God bless America. Is it beer time? Let's have some beer. Children, they were like, that man smells bad. So fresh and so clean, clean, so fresh and so clean.